Good day, strategy gamers, and welcome back to episode 37 of our Let's Play series, Stalingrad to Berlin, War in the East 2. In this episode, we're going to be completing the ground movement phase of turn 19, which will focus on everything from south of the Orel Pocket near Kursk down to the Crimea. Then we're going to spend some time deploying another um, mechanized army to the front lines. And if we have enough time, we'll take a look at the commander's report. But I think that might be another stretch as we've introduced the air elements into this episode. So let's dive right into it. In the previous episode, we left off with these hexes around Aurel having great success in pushing back the entire German line. And now they have a lot of questions to try to answer as to where are they going to, to make their stand uh, as we push towards Kursk from the northwest. From the due north direction, I think we have more opportunity to, con to continue to put pressure on what exactly is it they're going to do to try to hold us back. And right off the bat, I want to take a look at this stack and see if there's not an opportunity to take um, these two elements and push through along this rail line, separating, if we can get down to Marmesia in the next turn or two, separating then these units from supply on rail via Kursk. So I think that's going to be one of the first things that we'll do, is we have one rifle division here that is at combat value of one offensive, and I'm actually going to move them back in the line, and I'm going to move up this 143rd, and I think we will then bring down like the 148th to take their spot in the line here. So now we've got a much stronger um, offensive force that we can push here, which gives us about three to one. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. And we were successful, we pushed them out of that pocket and, ooh, you guys know I love to see this. We had two to one in our favor in terms of armor losses for the Germans. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, so mostly Stug 3s, Martyrs, Panzer Jaegers. Uh, whereas our losses, right, you see we're starting to introduce these SP elements, the SU-122 and SU-76, the 76 being a lighter version of the 122. Um, and the majority of our losses were, as usual, the T-34s, our, our mainstay, right? Um, but kind of almost 2 to 1 there in terms of losses. Men was 1 to 1, guns were 1 to 1. Uh, so very happy with those results. Now, let's see if we can take this maybe Cavalry Corps, and if we move them up, that leaves them with just 3.4 defensive value. So obviously I would like something a little more than that, so the 74th can't make it either. This Tank Corps isn't going to offer much in terms of defensive value, but we're going to bring them up. So that puts us at about five and a half for defense. Let's see, what else can we do to get up here? A little limiting, isn't it? Can we attach anything maybe in terms of support units to help them? So we can attach to the 11th Tank Corps this anti-tank rifle battalion, and we will do that since we know that they have SP elements in the force that we just pushed back. And then in the cavalry, let's take a look and see what we got. We're going to attach, I think the 129th Tank Brigade, and we're also going to attach some anti-air elements, considering they've been pretty heavy in terms of ground support. So I think that should really help, and does bring us up to about a seven. And if we take a look at what they have currently on the front line, Right, six, two, that makes eight, then 10. Um, we are probably sitting in a pretty good position now, especially considering we're not yet done with our advance. So I wanna take this fourth guards and see if this tank core can't push through for us, and it did. And now I want to take these elements and move them up into their rear. Right? So now we're coming at them from multiple directions and really causing them some headaches. We 
we're going to move them down. We'll take the strongest of these units back up here. Probably going to be the 15th Rifle Division, considering they are the lowest on fatigue. Okay. And then we will move these two elements back up. Good stuff, right? Look at that. That is some progress. Wonder... Can we attack here? Or should we attack here? That is the question, isn't it? I think we're going to attack against this mountain division. Nope, we don't have enough with delay. Okay, very well. Let's maybe then move up this 100th Rifle Division, and we'll take this stack and have them push back here. And that routed them. Good stuff. The Tank Corps can make it up, um, but the Tank Corps, I, I want to be an offensive weapon, not a defensive, right? Even though we kind of broke that rule back here. Um, yeah, so I think this puts them in a very precarious position where they have to try to think of a way to rescue um, these two elements of the 81st Infantry Division uh, because we're, we're pretty close to encirclement here. Very close to encirclement. We're going to keep looking at areas we can maybe push through. We're going to attack here as well. There was a Hungarian Light Division committed to the defense as well, so we were halted. So that's unfortunate. We're left then with four defensive value. That's enough to hold out there. Let's take maybe the 308th Rifle Division and see if they can't break through. And they did. Which now gives us an option to bring up the 121st here. As well as the 4th Rifle. And I think we will... Take up the 229th. So in this entire stack, let's press on their HQ. And that's also where their depot was, as I expected. So that's going to give them a lot of headache now. And these two units, we're just going to let them stay right where they're at. We should have enough to repel the counterattack. We're at about 11 or 12, so they do have 2 to 1. And here... Yeah, they even have better odds here, so maybe we flip-flop a unit or two. Let's see how we can just reinforce our position here. What are we staring down? Two infantry divisions? Three infantry divisions? So they might have some armor elements. These are part of the 38th and 60th. Let's see what we got. So let's attach this separate tank regiment to you. And then this rifle division, we're going to attach the anti-tank regiment. And the 305th, which is part of a different army, already has a tank brigade attached to it. Very well. Right here, we might have enough actually to push this unit back. We almost have three to one. So we're going to press that, then forcing this unit to really be stuck in a pickle. So let's give it a shot. Uh, looks like they managed to hold. So that's less than ideal. We can't win them all. At the very least, it's hopefully... ...convinced them that that is not a defensible position. Because um, now they have zero fortification level. So a lot of success we've had here along this front. And hopefully it presents an opportunity for a breakout towards Kursk, right? That's, that's kind of the goal. The dream. It's the dream. Down here, we have elements of the 5th Tank Army, which was near Stalingrad. Um, and again, we kind of have some opportunities to maybe break out and head west towards Kursk, or even Kharkov is kind of in sight for these guys, too. So we'd really kind of consolidated our forces here as we were moving up the 5th Tank Army. And let's just consider which, which direction do we want to help head with these guys, right? So, 
this rail line obviously is important, and it is a double routed rail line. Double sided, excuse me. But I think what we might do is take this stack over here, and we're going to use them to press south of where we already have some breakout opportunities. Oh, so they, they held that time. Okay. Fatigue is now high on these two. So I'm going to draw them both back. And let them sit there for a turn. If we now take this unit here, take this entire stack up, and maybe they can break through finally. They held again. My goodness. Okay. Maybe we can have luck here. Two to one. Yep, they retreat it. And over here, let's take the 232. No. Take the 141st and attack here. Romanian armor division committed to the defense. So they managed to hold. We'll now take the whole stack and attack. And they retreat at this time. Then if we take both of these and attack here, that's just one to one. So we're going to have to hold a little. So let's see. Now we get to looking at this portion of the front where we have the six army. You remember from previous episode, these guys were just in dire straits, right? We had rifle divisions that were 4,000, 3,000, 5,000 men. So we put a number of them on refit status. Um, and others we just kind of left to maintain this line. And they've actually done a really good job of working themselves back up. This rifle corps still needs to be um, swapped out <laughs> to, to go into refit status as it is sitting at about 30% um, strength. But it's kind of holding a very pivotal hex, and we don't have anything else to put there right now, right? And it's combined got a defensive value of... Uh, call it 19, 18, um, across a river from an armor division and an infantry division. So we're going to continue letting it hold there, and when we eventually can force back this unit, uh, then we will find ourselves in a position to say, all right, time for the rifle corps to also refit. Actually, I just went through that whole little spiel about that, but I think what I'm going to do instead... So I think I'm going to take the Rifle Corps off the line and set it to refit status. And then we're going to take this Tank Corps and move it down. And now we find ourselves in a good enough position to hold that hex. So sometimes you just change your mind on something. Over here, these guys are okay. And their objective is just to make sure these guys don't push north, right? And they're, they are certainly content with not being aggressive because they don't have the strength to push either. But given they're in fortification levels of two with about 10 defensive value in each hex, uh, this entire army does not have anything that could break through. So what do we do? Where we're strong and where they are weak, we push. Where they are strong and we are weak, we hold and regather. So skipping past this section in a sense then, we're going to continue moving down and look to see how much longer until I can capture this long envied double-sided rail line that we have moving north-south. And they have not withdrawn uh, their units here, uh, defending the south of it, which is of course unfortunate for me. Um, so we're gonna have to wait a little longer until we get this army reconstituted and have breakthroughs elsewhere that kind of push them back. Defensively, let's just do a check that we're still in a position where we can hold the line. And this hex, I really worry about their ability to hold the line. And I think we may have actually even pulled them back in the previous turn. I think we might pull them back once again. Um, because they are not as desperate as that army in the north. They are still sitting at 60-40% TOE. Which is not, not good, frankly. So I think we're going to take this stack and move them back to one of these two hexes. I'm thinking right here. 
and then the six guard rifle corps is going to have to continue holding the line. Uh, defensive value of 15 versus 20, so they're still going to be okay. If they move the third panzer up and then attack with both, that's the concern. So given that, I think what we will do is we're going to take probably the fifth mechanized. I No, no we're going to take the first guard mechanized. And we're going to move them up into this hex to ensure that they can't have success doing that. Okay. Up here... We, yeah, we have another rifle division that is just hurting part of the 6th Army. So we're going to have you go into refit stat. Well, actually, let's do this. So this 4th Guards, if I move you into this town, you're probably capable of holding it. So you have a defensive value of 24 against an offensive value of 22. Good. So then we're going to take these two units, maybe not the 22nd motorized, let's take a look at you. Yeah, you're actually pretty okay. So we'll move you up to the line, I think. But we will then set the 219th rifle to refit status as well. Okay. And we're going to have to move our HQ unit up one here uh, to keep everyone within command range. We've pulled back here across the river, so we kind of make sure we're in a good enough position, because we have these rifle divisions that are at 5,000, 5,000 men, uh, which is not good. The rifle corps is sitting at 64%. So I think what we will do is take both rifle divisions back behind the line and set them to refit. Actually, we're just going to have the move to the HQ, and that should help. Sp oh, wrong HQ. Shoot. You can still make it, though. Down here, same situation. These two rifle divisions. I'm going to move you back. Set you both to refit. Right, getting these guys ready for the next big push. Down south, where we've brought in the 66 Army, uh, they are currently under refit, right, trying to work their way back up after marching from Stalingrad. Um, we're going to start to push through a little here. So let's take the 2nd Guards Tank Corps and push here. Actually, we're just going to take both, I think. And yeah, the both attack. And that route at that Luftwaffe Field Division. Now, unfortunately, we're not in a position where we can cross the river because then we'd be opening ourselves up to counterattack from a combined offensive value of 35. So what we're instead going to do is take up this first guard rifle corps and yeah, maybe just leave you there, actually. That rifle division can go with you, I suppose. There's no harm in that. Yeah. Maybe. Having a thought here. So, if we can get to 21. We'll do this next turn. Next turn, we can get to about 21, 22 combat value attack. We move these two units into this city hex and push against this one hex. I think that would be a pretty successful operation if we did that. This rifle division we're going to move up. Down here... This rifle corps, how are you? You're hurting, bud. You're hurting. So let's get the rifle corps into this hex, which is a city. And then refit status. And you can just sit in reserve. Down here we have enough... No, we don't have enough defensive value. My goodness, they have brought up a lot. That's not good. So... Let's see. 
can we attach to you members, you fine members of the 64th Army, to help you against a counterattack? I think we will add this anti tank regiment. And we will also add an AA element to help against air counter. Yeah, we actually we might just need to pull you guys back entirely from the line. Guess I can bring up the six guard. That should help considerably. So we're gonna take back this brigade. And we will take back this one nineteenth rifle division. Let's bring the second guard up there. So that puts us now at about 12. Attached to you. Don't have any good anti-tank, but we can do an anti-air regiment and a separate tank regiment. How has that helped? Yeah. That helped. That gets us up to almost 13. Which means it's going to be close in terms of 2 to 1 if they did attack. Then we will take from the rear here the 7th Rifle Corps. Move you up. And then that puts you at about 10. How else can we strengthen you? Let's see what we can attach to the 7th Rifle Corps. We'll do this anti-tank regiment and this AA regiment. Okay. So at best now, then in both these hexes, they would have two to one. I, I feel okay about that. Here we have about 10 verse 14, so we're fine. Moving down here is where we want to keep pushing. So I think we're going to take this stack and go here. That's three to one. So we forced both of them to retreat. And let's take... This fourth guard's mechanized. Move you up. Defensive value of five. Oh, we don't have enough to move you guys up. Have I miscalculated again? I have miscalculated again. Shoot. So they're now stuck at five. Which means we need to think of a way to do a rescue up. Let's take the fifth tank guard up. And we're going to try to push on this hex now. That's not enough. We take that in the seventh rifle cord, get down. I don't think it can. We might not be able to push. That 13th Panzer is going to tear those guys apart. We bring up this tank core. I feel like I'm just committing. <laughs> I feel like I'm just committing more men to to be lost in heavy odds against the opponent. Yeah, none of you can make it there. We will move up though this artillery. Now we do need a rifle division. Actually, we're going to be okay here. We're okay defending that hex. Yeah, we're going to have to see if they counterattack here. I'm, I'm really hoping they don't. 
Let's keep pressing down here though against this hex. So that's three to one. They retreated. That's good news. Can we take you guys and get you up towards the front a little more? Let's try it. So that's enough to face off against these guys. Now where can we move in here? Don't think I want to move in here because we'd be facing ourselves against 21 offensive value and I don't see anything that would save us from that. This rifle brigade does not need to be back there though so you can move up to the front somewhere. Do we move you up there? No. I don't think so. We'll move you here. Gosh darn it. I selected the whole stack. Time to move the HQ back. Okay. Now down here we've got one, one, four, one, one, one. Hello. So let's take maybe just this rifle division and attack. No, we'll take these two rifle divisions and attack. So they retreat it. And... I don't know that we're going to be able to move up. I feel like we can take some of you, though, and move you up. Okay. So let's take you and attack here. Let's bring up the artillery too. All right, so that pushed them back. Now if we attack there. Ooh, they held. That kind of sucks, doesn't it? A lot of you guys are suffering there. So we might not be able to push into that hex. Let's focus on this right here. So if we take all of you and attack. So that routed them, remaining infantry division. Now I feel a little better about moving up with some of you. I get the feeling you are not doing well. You are not doing well. Might have you refit. So let's take 75th Rifle Division up there. That works. And back here we can take the 347th Rifle Division up. And then we will take the 110th maybe. Well, yeah, I guess you're actually not that bad. So we'll move you up. Can we attack? I don't think so. Let's do it. I don't think so. Let's do it, he says. Here we have rifle and rifle brigade and division. We're gonna take both stacks and attack. He retreated. Good. The march continues on. Don't know that we're gonna move into that hex though. Down here we had our little feint, and look, it worked. It exactly what we wanted to happen happened. Uh, they then. So they, they didn't have any forces down here in the south, aside from just this one, I think. Um, they were all concentrated in this hex and I think this hex. Um, but now they've spread them out along this entire rail line. 
because we moved these guys up is a bit of a feint. So it actually worked. Actually worked. So we're going to leave you there, I think. We will move you up. We're just going to reinforce portions of this line. Down here, you can go there. Have a rifle core, then you're on refit, aren't you? You don't need to be on refit anymore, though. I mean, you're not doing great, but you don't need to be on refit anymore. So we're going to move the rifle core up to... Let's see. I think I might move you right there, actually. No, we'll go here. Yeah, that works well. Can we attack and be successful? Three to one, let's do it. Push them back. Good job. Good job. I keep moving up to reinforce some of these units. bring some of these guys down south here in the hopes that maybe we actually can over time use this these two armies to to push through perhaps the very least we are trying to convince them oh yeah 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 we we want to push through there whether or not they believe us will of course be a different story Rail repair. Time for rail repair. Repair you. Repair you. You. I now need to move one of you out of there. I don't think I want to go much further with you. So we might now move you up to here. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, so then next turn all of these will all be repaired, all of these will be repaired. That is some meaningful progress there. We still need to... Why does that keep happening? I can't figure out why I can't hold that hex. So we're going to try and find another rail repair unit. And I've got a couple down here. So let's take you, move on rail mode. And we'll move you all the way up there. And we're going to have to wait till next turn to take you off the train. Okay. Well, we're in the rail mode. I'm going to keep going here, I think. So... Looks like there's an opportunity to repair this line. So we will do that. Is it faster to have you go? No, it is not faster. It is not faster. And have you go there. Repair. 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 Alright. So we managed to get that entire line repaired. Then we can keep going with all of these others shortly. All the way down to the Crimea. Alright. And then, I'm sorry guys, I'm going to hop around though. 
because I know that I brought a rail repair unit towards, I can't remember if his Midland Scritch reached it that I moved it. Looks like they're right here. And I already actioned them, it looks like. Okay, so I don't need to worry about them. Back to our combat actions. I think around Stellino, there's probably not much more we can do this turn. We had a lot of progress, not as much as we had previously. You can see they have really rushed in a lot of forces to try to hold Stellino here. Um, and the more that we push, here's the really interesting thing, right? Is, I'm actually going to, if you'll give me a moment here, I'm going to use some arrows, I think. So, the more that we push this way and this way, right? The more we can do that, the more we widen the front, right? Because right now, geography is kind of on their side because of the Sea of Azov, right? Um, this is a narrower. Let's just make it up and say this is, say, 30 hexes north-south, right? Well, by the time we get down here to where it reaches the Crimea in the Ukraine, going from here to that same point north, well, suddenly that becomes 40 or 50 hexes. And you see this huge bottleneck we have of forces where we can't always get all of them to the front line and engaging with the enemy. That's to the Germans' advantage, right? What we want to do as the attacker is to spread them as thin as possible and to use our numbers against them. So the more we can push south here, the wider we make their line, the easier it will be to have success in other areas of the front. So that's one of the focuses on moving down additional units to the south is, you know, probably be pretty tough, but it's kind of a win-win for us because we've diverted forces here, and if they're successful in breaking through, it widens the front, and we capture this port that helps supply Stellino. Um, but it also, even if we aren't able to push through, it forces them to stretch where they're allocating their forces. Right? These are panzer divisions that could be here at the heart of the roads into Stellino defending. But they're not. Instead, they're having to move down quickly, right? And that's probably why they chose them, is they could move quickly down the line armor, mechanized, mechanized, armor, armor, armor. They moved the fastest compared to an infantry division. That's probably why they chose to move them down here. So we've diverted and kind of forced the German player's hand in terms of where they wanted these units to go. So like I said, I don't think we have many more moves that we want to do on the front here. Maybe we take you two up to here. We will do that as kind of our last thing. You are both hurting in terms of rifle divisions, but you're going to put the pressure on them. That cavalry corps, maybe we even move you up. No, because you're, you're struggling a little. Can this NKVD unit move up there? Yes, you can. So we'll, we'll do that. There we go. So now we have defense value of about three. Right, which means they would have to pull in a different unit to attack with. And what what happened here, right? I forgot that we were moving the 37th Army south. Uh, you are part of the, the 37th Army, so we're going to move you over here. And we have an element in the stack of the 37th Army. You I'm going to reallocate to either the 9th or the 18th Army. Let's look at the 18th Army. You are at capacity. 9th Army. You are not. So guess what? You get to be part of the 9th Army. Here, and 9th Army. Ta-da. Let's continue moving down these elements of the 37th Army. And these guys are all going to come and become the third army that is uh, pushing through the Crimea.
pushing through as quickly as possible, I might add. Alright. I really am curious when we're going to see our first resistance here in the Crimea. If we see any at all, I might add. It's not exactly a guarantee. I think we're going to move the stronger units, like these rifle corps, towards the north. The 11th rifle corps will also follow up here. Whereas some of the rifle divisions we will move towards Sevastopol. So it actually looks like there's a bit of a passable terrain there. As much as possible, though, we'll keep you guys moving on these rail lines. Even though the rail lines are not quite yet repaired, I think we will move this rifle division up. So very many units to move. Okay. So I think that wraps up all of our ground movements for the turn. So now what we're going to do is take a look at um, the deployment of a new army, which I think we will still have go to Rezhev, because I think I want them to be part of the push on Adritsa, Rezekni, um, Krustpils, Ogre, and Riga. So let's see, is Rezhev the right location for them? I think it is. If not, maybe we could have them go to one of these towns. Let's maybe have them deploy to Veleki Luki. So that's hex 201-129. Bring it to our reserve box. I need to say that a few more times. 201-129. Status. 201-129. So it's too close to a supplied enemy unit. Okay, that that makes sense, right? Because there have to be some constraints on how far up you can push. And I think it's a 10 hexes. So let's maybe try instead Toro Pets, which is 205 126. 126 still 10. What about Edriopool 206-125? Try you. Five. See, now that doesn't feel like that's within 10 hexes. It's the closest you... Oh, it's because of these guys that have pushed up, actually. That's what it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so that's within six. If we're going this direction, though, it probably is closer to ten. So I think we're going to have to keep it at Rajev. Maybe we can do something a little closer here, like Molino. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nope, we're just going to keep it at Rajev. There's nothing quite like watching a video and listening to someone count. I think that's that never gets old, right? So what we want to do is we want to deploy from the reserve box the 5th Guards Tank Army. And we're going to have that 5th Guards Tank Army made up of um, this 8th Guard Tanks Corps, 4th Tank Corps, uh, 29th Tank Corps. I keep going back and forth on because their TOE is still a little low compared to what I would like. 
but the big thing is they're going to have these three mechanized cores as well, uh, which are all built up. So, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get these guys deployed to the map. So they're transferring to the map. Take the fourth tank core. Also take the eighth tank core. Go through and do these mechanized cores. All right. We also have these motorcycle regiments that we had built a few turns ago. We're going to let them sit another couple of turns, but I would like to have these, and I want to build more of them too, but I want to start having these support units ready for the summer months, right, to attach to uh, the various divisions. Looking at this, there would be another option, and that would be these SP gun units that we might attach to... Well, yeah, these are regiments that'd be support units we might attach. However, you'll note that their TOE on all of these is very low, and that's due to a very low production level of the SU-122s. Um, we're, we're just not producing many of them. Over time, that will change. The Soviets did realize more and more throughout the war how important these SP platforms were, especially as they faced more and more resistance from the German equivalent, which were um, the Stug 3s, the, um, there's another one that's escaping my mind right now. There's the Martyr 2s, Panzer Jaegers, but there's another one they introduced later on in the war that I can't think of, the, the Ferdinand, um, which was built in very limited capacity, but a very strong vehicle. As I've been talking, I've been thinking more and more about whether or not we want to include this tank core that's at 82%. I think we're going to, just because we do have to do a bit of a quick push towards Riga. It's going to be better to have them than not. And then we're also going to take some of these tank regiments and deploy them so then they can hopefully be used in the various armies as support units. Keep going through here. This heavy tank... Yeah, you're, you're at 100%. We have a few more of you up here that we will also do. Big fan of these heavy tank regiments. Uh, those KV-1s are just quite spectacular pieces of machinery. And then I think we might also... Oh, did I miss a mechanized core? I missed a mechanized core. So we need to deploy them too. We're also going to attach um, some motorized brigades. Yeah, let's deploy two of these. Okay. So that's going to give us a fair amount to do uh, in the following turn uh, to move that tank army up in support of our push on Adritza. Let's also look at our Far East theater box to see it's still just the air elements. And I think if we were to take a look at our transfer and withdrawal schedule, I think we would see that there's still some moving to the Far East. Maybe they've already arrived, though, so maybe we really do have that much of a gap in the Far East in terms of air. So I think we will go to our air reserves and transfer more. So reserve, air, and we're going to have to transfer tactical bombers and don't know that the recon applies to the air patrol, so I don't think we're going to send them. So we'll send a few more tactical bombers. I think maybe four in total. And last one. Um... I would love to transfer fighters and fighter bombers. Alas, as you can see, we do not have many uh, available here. 
and the AI assist is next turn because we've been having this air combat happening throughout the uh, two episodes here of turn 19. Uh, they're going to have to do a lot of movement to and from the reserve box with units that have become too depleted. And with that, they will also then pull from the reserve box various air operational groups that are ready to come to the map and help fight. So we're going to leave those there for the AI uh, as it considers what it's going to do next turn with the deployment of those forces. I had removed our ship hexes. So there they are. They're back. And I think we're going to go ahead and in turn, we'll click the AI Manage Depots. We will then go over the end of turn summary, news events, and close everything out. Let's skip past all of these resupply missions that have got going on. All right. Now it is on to the German logistics phase. Seems to be going pretty fast this evening. That's good. Still can't believe we captured Smolensk a couple turns ago so easily. I thought that was going to be just a devastating encirclement that lasted forever, but very pleasantly surprised. Here you can see a pretty good visual, right, of kind of my plan of taking Smolensk and having this, what would be from northwest to southeast uh, rail line, this chain of cities that can provide supply from the most northern points of our front to their most southern, and have Smolensk kind of be the, the central region for all of it, that main hub, if you will, right? This running right up here to where we're pushing on Idritsa, that double-sided rail line would be so important. And then you have the rail line continuing down here towards Orel, uh, which we have now also captured. Now we just need to, you know, do the hard part, capture all the rail lines that exist in between the cities. Uh, but we will get there. We will get there. I, of course, jinxed myself by saying it looked like the AI logistics was going quite fast today. Uh, now it has slowed down a little. But it is moving along, and it speeds right back up as I say that. On to the German air execution phase. We'll see how aggressive they are um, now that that weather has improved for them as well. You'll see that their air armies, they're all at 60-70% um, in terms of status, whereas ours are at, call it, 90 to 100 uh, so they certainly have taken their fair share of losses. They've run 300 sorties here, and they've had 20 operational losses. I'm a little surprised that they haven't had any loss due to air combat or flak. Um, yeah, it is a little surprising to see that. Because I think when we ran our same air recon, we had a number that were lost to flak in air combat. But maybe they are flying at a higher altitude, which eliminates the concern of flak and our fighters just weren't able to intercept the Germans, maybe. Now we get into their ground movement phase, and we will see here where they choose to counterattack. So the first one that's happening is just east of Orel, where they pushed us back. We'd reallocated forces there, if you recall. They've also pushed us back where we had... Okay, so they've had two successes here. And this was that pocket where we had started to encircle them. That's a little unfortunate. I had hoped we had been able to hold that. Also down near the northern Kursk front, where we had pushed through here. This does seem to be the majority of their fighting. Let's see what else they've got up their sleeves. Uh, up here near Leningrad, they're counterattacking, but we held quite easily. But they have brought up some mechanized units here, so they're probably going to be able to break through eventually. That's concerning. Ah, uh, held again. Those 20,000 Soviet comrades are doing a great job. Let's do it one more time. Oh, and on that last attempt there, we got pushed back. That's unfortunate. That's been just a, a tug of war back and forth between us and the German player and those two hexes. 
Looks like they moved something up here to take back that hex as well. We'll see how they redeploy everything and what the final front ends up looking like. The fact that they had brought up a mechanized force, I think it was maybe these guys right down here. No, it couldn't be because they had so many movement points. Oh no, maybe, maybe they did, because, and now they're re refocused right here. Yeah, because they've brought up a panzer division too. So I think they took forces from the south of the Leningrad pocket and moved them north to counterattack there, which is a little surprising to be honest. But again, works in our favor is now maybe that will provide an opportunity to push further west, south of Leningrad. Going through, automating through all those resupply missions. Here we're going through our AI logistics phase. Um, and what a what a couple turns this has all been. This has been a lot of fun. Going through rail repair, my favorite topic. Get those rail lines moving again, please. The end of turn summary is going to be pretty interesting too, considering we had so much air combat. Let's see. Feeling very optimistic about this entire push here in the Baltics towards Peskov. That really forces their hand if we can force them to retreat here through this peninsula. Also gives us more time to make it all the way over to Riga. Okay. Let's see what we've got in store. End of turn summary, 82,000 men lost, 1,600 gun platforms, 528 armored fighting vehicles, which has stayed very static. Drum roll, please. 1,000 airframes lost. Uh, compared to a normal of 20, 50, thereabouts. Um, so my goodness. That, that says it all, doesn't it? In terms of order of battle changes, we saw a net positive of 52,000 men. 700 gun platforms, 1,500 armored fighting vehicles, and 1,000 airframes. Whereas the Germans saw a net decrease of 10,000 men. Uh, they're flat on gun platforms, flat on armor, and airframes, they lost 126. So we had 1,000 total losses of airframes, but the German players still had a net loss of 126, and that's the type of trend we need because... It isn't even necessarily the airframes, it's that representation that in that 126 number are many, many skilled pilots uh, that they will never be able to recover. Supply alert, again, getting more and more worried about this every turn that passes. We're up to 115 now. I think it was about 110, 105 in the previous turn. I really liked it a lot better when we were sitting at 40, 50, 60 in terms of low supply. Uh, so that's something that we're really going to have to keep our eye on. Let's go over to the new events. Here we see the RAF launching long-range raids, which is impacting the manpower for Germany. The Mighty Eighth continues their targets on heavy industries and rail yards. Taking the Marath Line. So British forces bypass, then capture the Marath Line, forcing the Axis to evacuate southern Tunisia. So South Tunisia falls to the Allies. So this is a... Campaign event that continues in North Africa. And then Soviet partisans continue doing what they do behind German lines. And that wraps up the episode and gets us all set for turn 20 and all of the fun that will be in store. As always, thank you so much for the time and attention to watch the video and the series. Uh, should you have any questions, feedback, or comments, please leave them in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer them. And with that, Strategy Gamers, hope you have a great day. Bye now.